the excitement of deep sea fishing. As the sun began to rise over the glistening ocean, Mark and his friends were gearing up for their deep sea fishing adventure. They grabbed their tackle boxes, rods, reels, and bait, ready to tackle big game fish. The journey began with the trolling method. The boat was moving slowly with bait trailing behind it in the water. It was a crucial technique used to lure fish towards the boat. Everyone kept their eyes peeled, waiting for any sign of a catch. It was only a matter of time before they felt a tug on their line. The excitement was palpable as everyone started reeling in their line. The fish put up a good fight, but with each reel, they came closer to the boat. Finally, one of them saw his catch emerge from the water, and it was an impressive seven-foot marlin. He was ecstatic and exhilarated as he posed for a picture with his catch before releasing it back into the ocean. The adventure continued as they moved to deeper waters. It was a challenging task to find the perfect spot for their next catch. The anticipation was high as they all knew the deeper they went, the more intense the fish would become. The ocean's beauty was unlimited, with the waves dancing around them and the wind blowing in their hair. It was peaceful yet all-consuming. Suddenly, Mark's reel gave a sudden jerk, almost pulling him overboard. He knew from the force that it was going to be a big fish. He kept a tight grip on his rod as he started reeling in his line with all his might. It was a slow process, but eventually they saw the tip of a massive swordfish emerge. It was an incredible sight, and Mark's adrenaline was pumping. He fought the fish with all his might until, finally, he succeeded in bringing it aboard. He was ecstatic as he posed for a picture with his catch, feeling a deep sense of pride. The whole day was filled with the thrill of the unknown, the excitement of what was lurking beyond the surface. As the sun started to set, they reluctantly began making their way back to shore. The sound of the waves crashing against the boat was the only sound they could hear it provided the perfect melody for their thoughts. The trip came to an end as they docked their boat and unloaded their equipment, exhausted from the day's catch. They all felt a great sense of accomplishment and incredible memories to last a lifetime. Deep sea fishing is truly an experience like no other, providing a thrill that is unimaginable to describe. Question, what is the most common deep sea fishing technique? Check the video description for the answer. The art of fly fishing. The sun was just peeking over the treetops as Liam made his way to the river. He was looking forward to spending the day fly fishing, his favorite hobby. As he walked along the bank, he could see the clear, shallow water of the stream dotted with rocks and boulders. He carefully chose his spot, tied on an artificial fly, and cast his line into the water. He watched as the lure drifted downstream, waiting for the flash of a trout. He knew that stream fishing was all about patience and skill, and he was determined to catch the biggest fish of the day. Liam had been fly fishing for many years, but he still had a deep respect for the art of angling. He was an avid conservationist, and always practiced catch and release, taking care not to harm the delicate ecosystem of the river. The key to fly fishing, he knew, was in the casting. He had worked hard to perfect his technique over the years, and he was now able to cast with precision and accuracy. He could lay his fly gently on the water, just where he wanted it, and watch as the trout rose to take the bait. As he cast his fly again and again, Liam felt himself becoming one with the river. He could feel the current pulling at his line, the wind tugging at his hair. He was in his element, and he knew that this was where he belonged. After a long morning of fishing, Liam finally felt a tug on his line. He could feel the weight of the trout on the other end, fighting to get free. He knew that he had to be careful to play the fish just right, or risk losing it altogether. He carefully reeled in the line, keeping the tension just right, until finally he could see the flash of the trout in the water. It was a beautiful fish, with shimmering scales and bright eyes. 
Liam carefully removed the hook from its mouth, admiring its perfect form. As he released the trout back into the river, Liam felt a sense of satisfaction and contentment wash over him. He knew that he had done his part in preserving the delicate ecosystem of the river, and that he had done it all while enjoying the art of fly fishing. As he packed up his gear and made his way back to his car, Liam knew that he would come back to the river again and again. For him, fly fishing was more than just a hobby, it was a way of life. And he was grateful for every moment he spent on the river, casting his rod and trying to catch the perfect trout. Question, what is fly fishing? Check the video description for the answer. The thrill of ice fishing. It was the dead of winter, and the snow was piling up outside. But for a group of fishing enthusiasts, this was the perfect time to head out to the frozen fishing hole and experience the thrill of ice fishing. They brought along their trusty ice auger, which they used to drill holes in the thick ice. Once they had made their holes, they set out their tip-ups and jigs, each one hoping to land the catch of the day. As they baited their hooks with fresh minnows, they talked animatedly about their past ice fishing adventures. Their laughter echoed across the frozen lake, creating a sense of camaraderie and adventure. Soon enough, the first fish bit. The line jolted, and they all gathered around excitedly as the fisherman reeled in his catch. It was a beautiful trout, its scales shimmering in the winter sunlight. The group was thrilled and the adrenaline rush was enough to make them forget the biting cold. They continued to fish, trading tips and stories, and enjoying the sense of adventure that came with braving the winter weather. As they fished, they noticed a lone figure in the distance walking across the frozen lake. The stranger looked like he had been out in the elements for quite some time, and he appeared to be lost. Without hesitation, the group invited him over to their makeshift fishing camp. They offered him some hot coffee and a chance to warm up by the fire. As they chatted, they learned that he was a fellow ice fisherman who had gotten separated from his group earlier in the day. It was clear that he was grateful for the warmth and companionship that the group had offered him. In turn, he shared some of his own ice fishing stories with them, describing the thrill of landing a huge northern pike and the excitement of watching his tip-up pop up on the frozen lake. Eventually, as the sun began to set over the frozen wasteland, the group packed up their gear and headed back to their cars. They were all exhausted from the day's adventures, but there was a sense of satisfaction that came with knowing that they had braved the elements and landed some amazing catches. As they hugged and said their goodbyes, they all agreed that the thrill of ice fishing was like no other. They knew that they would be back out on the ice again soon, ready for their next winter adventure. Question, what is ice fishing? Check the video description for the answer. The Challenge of Saltwater Fly Fishing As the sun rose over the ocean, John grabbed his rod and reel and headed out for a day of saltwater fly fishing. He was excited to try his hand at angling in the open sea, knowing that the saltwater fish would put up a fierce fight. After arriving at his favorite spot, John carefully selected his artificial fly from his tackle box. He had spent hours tying and perfecting this lure, using his experience from countless hours of freshwater fly fishing to create the perfect imitation of the small baitfish that the saltwater species preyed upon. With his rod in hand, John stepped into the surf, feeling the cool salt water washing over his feet. He measured his casting distance and carefully flaked his wrist, sending the fly out into the ocean. As he retrieved the line, he felt a tug on the other end of the rod. He had caught his first salt water fish. Over the next few hours, John battled the powerful fish, using his skill and experience to keep the fish from breaking the line or escaping. He tried different casting techniques, changing the speed and direction of his lure, and experimenting with various retrieves. With each catch, he learned more about the challenges of saltwater fly fishing, 
and he was determined to keep pushing himself to become a better angler. As the day wore on, John noticed that the fish were becoming more elusive. They seemed to be spooked by the bright midday sun, and he struggled to rekindle the excitement of his earlier catches. But he persevered, continuing to cast and retrieve his lure until finally he hooked a massive tarpon. The tarpon was one of the most elusive and challenging saltwater fish to catch, known for its agility and strength. John knew he was in for a tough fight, and he used all of his skills and knowledge to keep the fish from breaking his line. After a grueling battle that lasted over an hour, John finally landed the tarpon, a trophy fish that would be the envy of any angler. As he released the fish back into the ocean, John felt a sense of accomplishment that he had never felt before. Saltwater fly fishing had presented him with a new set of challenges, and he had risen to meet them. He knew that there would be more days ahead, more fish to catch, and more lessons to learn. But for now, he was content to savor the feeling of his hard-won victory, and to reflect on the joys and challenges of his new passion. Question, what is saltwater fly fishing? Check the video description for the answer. The Art of Net Fishing The fisherman carefully maneuvered his boat through the shallow waters of the river. His eyes focused on the fish net he had cast earlier that day. The mesh net glowed in the sunlight, reflecting the colors of the river's deep waters. He had been net fishing since he was a young boy, learning from his father how to properly cast and collect fish with the traditional fishing gear. Net fishing was an art form, requiring patience, skill, and knowledge of the fish's behavior. The fisherman had learned to read the river's currents and tides, knowing exactly when and where to drop the fish net. As he navigated the boat, he could feel the weight of the catch growing heavier as more fish were harvested into the net. The fisherman began to reel in the fish net, his muscles straining against the weight of the catch. The fish squirmed and wriggled, desperate to escape the mesh net that had ensnared them. But it was too late. They were the fishermen's now, soon to be sold and eaten by hungry customers. Net fishing was a way of life for the fisherman, who relied on his catch to support his family. He knew the importance of sustainable fishing practices, ensuring that the fish in the river could continue to thrive and be harvested for generations to come. Large-scale fishing operations that destroyed ecosystems and depleted fish populations were not the answer. The fishermen believed in a balance between harvesting and preserving, relying on traditional methods to catch fish without causing harm to the environment. As the boat reached the shore, the fishermen began to unload the catch. The fish were sorted by size and species, placed into buckets and crates to be sold at the market. The fisherman was proud of his catch, knowing that he had worked hard to harvest them with the fish net. He had a deep respect for the river and the fish that lived within it. Net fishing was more than just a means of survival. It was a way of connecting with nature and understanding the delicate balance of the ecosystem. The fisherman knew that his actions could have a ripple effect, affecting the river's ecosystem and the fish population. He was responsible for protecting the river and the fish, ensuring that the next generation could continue to enjoy the art of net fishing. As the sun began to set, the fisherman cleaned his fishing gear and prepared for another day on the river. He knew that he had a responsibility to sustainably harvest fish using techniques that had been passed down through generations. Net fishing was an art form that required a deep understanding of the environment and the fish within it. The fisherman was proud to be a part of that tradition, dedicating his life to the art of net fishing. Question, what is net fishing? Check the video description for the answer. The Joy of Freshwater Fishing Harry woke up early one summer morning, excited for his first freshwater fishing trip of the season. He gathered his angling equipment, including his favorite fishing rod and reel, and headed out to the nearby river. As he arrived at the river, he was surprised to see how clear the water was. 
he set up his fishing rod and carefully baited his hook. Casting his line into the water, he waited patiently for a bite. After a few minutes, he felt a tug on his line. He quickly reeled in his line, and to his amazement, saw a beautiful rainbow trout had taken the bait. Harry was thrilled with his first catch of the day. As the day progressed, Harry moved from the river to several nearby lakes and ponds. The fishing was slow at first, but as the day wore on, he began to have more success. He caught a variety of fish, including perch, bass, and even a large catfish. Harry was enjoying the peacefulness of the water and the thrill of the catch. He loved the challenge of setting his bait and casting his line just right to entice the fish. He also loved the satisfaction of catching a fish and the feeling of connection with nature that came with each catch. As the sun began to set, Harry reflected on his day of freshwater fishing. He realized how lucky he was to have access to so many beautiful rivers, lakes, and ponds. He also realized how important it was to protect these natural resources so that future generations could enjoy the same experiences he had. Harry packed up his fishing gear, tired but content after a full day of angling. He couldn't wait to plan his next fishing trip and see what catches awaited him in the streams and rivers of the area. Freshwater fishing was truly a joy for Harry, a way to connect with nature and challenge himself in the great outdoors. He knew he would continue to fish whenever he could, and that each catch would bring him even more happiness and appreciation for the natural world around him. Question, what is freshwater fishing? Check the video description for the answer. The fun of kayak fishing. Kayak fishing had become Jake's latest passion. The thrill of catching a fish from a small boat was incomparable to any other kind of angling he had tried before. He had been to various locations, from calm rivers and serene lakes to challenging oceans, each offering different kinds of fish species and experiences. Despite the differences in locations, one constant remained the need for proper fishing gear and navigation. Jake had invested in high-quality fishing gear, including a reliable kayak, to ensure his safety while battling fish. He always made sure to double-check his gear before embarking on any fishing trip. When it came to navigation, Jake had made it a priority to learn how to read maps and use a compass effectively. Paddling a kayak requires a certain level of skill, and Jake had undergone thorough training to hone his paddling skills, particularly in areas with strong currents, such as the ocean. As he paddled out into the river, Jake felt excitement pulse through his veins. He had heard that the river was abundant with fish, and he couldn't wait to test his luck. He cast his line and waited patiently, the gentle swaying of the kayak lulling him into a state of peaceful solitude. Suddenly his reel started to spin, and Jake's adrenaline started to pump with excitement. He had caught a fish and he worked tirelessly to reel it in. The fish fought back, the line taut, but Jake's persistence paid off, and he finally pulled the fish into the kayak. He held the magnificent fish in awe as he admired its sparkling scales, pleased with his successful catch. As he released it back into the water, he felt a sense of satisfaction and gratitude, having been able to experience the natural beauty surrounding him. Jake continued his journey through the river, catching fish after fish, each one more exciting than the last. The simple joy of fishing from a kayak was unmatched. He felt like a child again, filled with wonder and amazement at the beauty of nature. As the sun began to set on the horizon, Jake knew it was time to head back to shore. He carefully packed his gear and climbed out of the kayak, his muscles aching from the exhilarating day of fishing. Looking back at the river, Jake felt a sense of gratitude for the opportunity to experience the joy of kayak fishing. He knew this was only the beginning of his journey and was eager to explore new locations, meet fellow anglers, and create more unforgettable memories.
Question, what is kayak fishing? Check the video description for the answer. The adrenaline of big game fishing. As the sun began to rise over the ocean, John S. Hart started to race with adrenaline. He was about to embark on his first big game fishing adventure. And he couldn't he be more excited. He had been an angling enthusiast for years, but had never gone after the large game fish of the deep sea. Today, he was determined to catch his first marlin, shark, tuna, or swordfish. John had heard many stories of the difficulty and danger of big game fishing, but he was ready for the challenge. He stepped onto the boat, his gear in hand, and took a deep breath of the salty air. The captain greeted him and gave him a quick rundown of what to expect out on the water. The boat set out, and John and the other anglers began casting their lines. The ocean looked calm, but that didn't he mean there wasn't tea something lurking below. John was ready for whatever might come his way. As the day wore on, John's arms began to ache with the strain of holding onto his rod. He had hooked a few small fish, but nothing that gave him the rush he was looking for. Then suddenly, his line jolted and he knew he had something big on the other end. He began to reel furiously feeling the weight of the fish pulling against him. The captain called out instructions, helping John to maneuver the fish closer to the boat. His heart was pounding in his chest as he caught a glimpse of the huge tuna that was now being reeled closer to him. With one final heave, John managed to pull the tuna on board. He was exhilarated, feeling the thrill of the catch better than he ever had before. It was a rush that he knew he could get addicted to. As the day wore on, John S. Tally grew. He managed to hook a swordfish and even a small shark. The excitement of being out on the water and facing off against these incredible creatures was addictive. He couldn't he wait to come back and do it all over again. As the boat made its way back to shore, John couldn't he help but feel proud of what he had accomplished. He had faced off against some of the toughest fish the ocean had to offer, and he had come out victorious. As he stepped off the boat, he knew that he would be back. The adrenaline rush of big game fishing was something that he couldn't resist. It was a part of him now, and he would never be able to go back to the simple pleasures of angling. Big game fishing had stolen his heart and he couldn't he wait to see what other adventures awaited him out on the open sea. Question, what is big game fishing? Check the video description for the answer. The Romance of Fishing at Dawn As the sun began to rise over the calm waters, Tom sat in his small boat, preparing his angling gear. This was his favorite time of day, when the world was quiet and still, and the fish were just starting to wake up. He carefully baited his hook with a juicy worm and cast his line out into the water, watching as it landed with a soft plop. He waited patiently, his eyes scanning the surface of the water for any sign of movement. Suddenly, he felt the tub on the line, and his heart leapt with excitement. He picked up his rod and began to reel in the catch, his hands working in a practiced rhythm. As the fish thrashed about in the water, Tom felt a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment, knowing that he had successfully caught his breakfast. He carefully removed the hook and tossed his catch into a bucket, already thinking about how he would cook it up later. For Tom, fishing at dawn was not just about catching fish, it was also a chance to connect with nature and find peace in the stillness of the morning. He loved the way the sunlight played on the water and the sound of the birds singing in the trees. As he cast his line again and again, he felt his worries and stresses slip away, replaced by a sense of calm and contentment. He knew that this was where he belonged, and that he would keep coming back to the water, no matter what. And so, as the morning wore on, Tom continued to fish, lost in the magic of the moment. He caught several more fish, each one bringing him closer to the heart of this peaceful and beautiful land. In the end, as the sun began to climb higher in the sky, he reluctantly packed up his gear and headed back to shore. 
but he knew that he would be back, soon enough, to experience the romance of fishing at dawn once again. Question, what is the best time to go fishing? Check the video description for the answer. The Peace of Fishing in Nature Hiking to his favorite fishing spot, Jack was already feeling a sense of calm wash over him. He loved fishing in nature not just because of the potential catch, but for the peace and relaxation it brought. As he made his way down to the stream, he noticed the fresh air filling his lungs and the quiet calm around him. Taking a deep breath, Jack began to ready his rod and get to work. Exercising his patience and skill, Jack cast his line into the water and waited for the fish to bite. The sound of the water flowing and the chirping of nearby birds only added to the tranquility of the moment. Angling was not just a pastime for Jack. It was a time to connect with nature and let go of the stresses of everyday life. As he waited, Jack allowed his mind to wander and reflect on his life. The act of fishing was a form of meditation for him, and he found that it helped him to clear his mind and focus on the present moment. The worries and stresses that had been looming in his mind all week seemed to melt away, replaced by the gentle ripples of the water and the sound of the breeze rustling the trees. After a few minutes of waiting, Jack felt a tug on his line, signaling that he had caught something. Quickly and carefully, he reeled in the fish and marveled at the beauty of his catch. Not only was it a triumph of his angling skills, but it was a reminder of the beauty and wonder of nature. With the catch safely in his cooler, Jack took a deep breath and cast his line again, eager to see what else the stream had in store for him. He found himself feeling more relaxed and at peace than he had in weeks, grateful for the chance to escape into nature and forget all of life's worries for a few hours. As the sun began to set on his fishing excursion, Jack collected his gear and made his way back to the trail. Though he was a bit tired, and his arms were sore from reeling in his catch, he felt rejuvenated and renewed. The peace of fishing in nature had worked its magic once again, leaving him with a sense of groundedness and balance that he knew would carry with him long after he left the stream. Question, what are the benefits of fishing in nature? Check the video description for the answer. The satisfaction of catching your own bait. Karen loved bait fishing. There was something incredibly satisfying about catching your own bait using natural materials, whether it was worms or insects, or even small fish. She found it much more rewarding than simply buying live bait from the tackle shop. Angling was all about being in touch with nature, and Karen took that to heart. She woke up early on Saturday morning, eager to hit the lake. She grabbed her fishing rod and a bucket and headed down to the shore. The sun was just starting to rise, casting an orange glow across the water. Karen took a deep breath of the fresh morning air and smiled. This was her favorite time of day. She scanned the shoreline for any signs of bait. Eventually, she spotted a pile of rocks that looked like it would be a good place to find worms. She waded into the shallow water and started overturning rocks, holding her breath with anticipation. After a few minutes, she finally found what she was looking for, a handful of wriggling, slimy worms. She carefully picked them up and placed them in her bucket. Next, Karen turned her attention to the trees and bushes along the shore. She had learned that this was a great place to find insects. She spotted a few grasshoppers, which she plucked off the leaves with nimble fingers. She also found a few small fish that had gotten trapped in a shallow pool. She gently picked them up and tossed them in the bucket as well. Karen was now ready to bait her hook. She carefully threaded a worm onto the hook and attached a grasshopper as well. She knew this combination would be irresistible to the fish. She cast her line out and waited. It didn't take long for Karen to feel a tug on the line. She reeled in slowly, heart pounding with excitement. As the fish came closer, she could see that it was a decent-sized base. She carefully lifted it out of the water and removed the hook. 
After admiring the catch for a moment, she gently released it back into the water. Karen spent the rest of the morning catching and releasing fish after fish. She tried a variety of different baits, from live worms to lures, and each one seemed to attract a different species of fish. She even caught a few bluegills, which were tiny but bright and colorful. As the sun started to climb higher in the sky, Karen knew it was time to pack up and head home. She felt satisfied and fulfilled, knowing that she had caught her own bait and used it to catch some impressive fish. She couldn't wait to come back next weekend and do it all again. Question, what is bait fishing? Check the video description for the answer. The Triumph of Catch and Release Fishing The early morning sun was just peeking over the horizon as a group of anglers gathered by the river bank. They came from all walks of life businessmen, families, students, all united by their love for fishing. But there was one thing that set them apart from the average angler, their commitment to catch and release fishing. Catch and release fishing had become a trend in recent years, as awareness about the importance of conservation and fish preservation grew. Anglers who practiced catch and release fishing understood that the sport did not have to be at odds with the environment. By returning the fish back to the water, they were doing their part to maintain a healthy fish population. The anglers were equipped with everything they needed for ethical fishing barbless hooks, rubber nets, and a lot of patience. They waded knee-deep into the cool water and cast their lines out, hoping for a bite. It wasn't long before the first catch was reeled in a beautiful rainbow trout. The angler gently removed the hook from the fish's mouth and cradled it in his hand for a moment before releasing it back into the water. The fish darted away back to its underwater home. Another angler caught a massive carp, which put up a strong fight before finally succumbing to the lure. As he carefully released the fish, he couldn't help but smile at the thought that it would live to see another day. The anglers spent the next few hours fishing, chatting, and enjoying the peaceful serenity of the river. They caught and released several more fish, each one treated with respect and care. But catch and release fishing was not just about respecting the fish. It was also about water management and the well-being of the ecosystem. By practicing catch and release fishing, Anglers were helping to promote sustainable fishing practices and reduce the impact of fishing on the environment. One angler, a marine biologist, explained how recycling fish could benefit the environment. By turning fish into fertilizer, feed for livestock, or even dog food, fish could still be used as a resource without depleting fish populations. As the day drew to a close, the anglers packed up their gear and bid each other farewell. But they knew that their commitment to catch and release fishing was just beginning. They would continue to spread the word about ethical fishing practices and do their part to preserve fish populations for the next generation. As they drove away, they couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and gratitude. They had experienced the triumph of catch and release fishing and were now part of a movement that was making a difference. Question, what is catch and release fishing?